So once again, welcome to the fifth annual Faculty Hall of Fame ceremony. My name is Sandra Bozarth and I'm the Dean of Libraries here at CSU Bakersfield. I'd like to start uh, first by thanking a few people or a few groups. I won't, I'm not gonna list everyone's names. I know I'll forget someone, so I'm doing these by groups. I first wanna thank the selection committee who um, worked hard, um, both past and present. If you're if you were on this year or any of the previous year's selection committees, if you could please stand and be recognized. Thank you. We had representation on that committee from each school on campus, the library, ASI, alumni, uh, student affairs, and um, Many of the folks on this most recent committee have been on it since inception in 2018. So that was very valuable to me serving in my first year on that committee. So um, your, uh, your time and commitment is much appreciated. Uh, I greatly appreciated um, all of the other departments on campus that helped as well are offices, the university advancement, marketing and communications, events, as well as the library administration team and the historical research center. And a thank you to the office of the provost for co-sponsoring this event with the library. It really does take a village and a lot of collaboration and planning to have such an amazing and important event as this one. All your efforts of making today a success have not gone unnoted. I would like to now hand this over to Dr. Vernon Harper, Provost and Vice President of Academic Affairs. Well, please continue to enjoy your lunch. I appreciate you all being here, welcome. Uh, welcome to the library, it's very, very important. Uh, let's give me a round of applause to Dean Bozarth for putting this event together. This remarkable leader here on the campus. I want to thank the faculty and staff as well as the selection committee. I want to also call out Kurt Asher there. Appreciate him. This is his idea, the genesis of his idea. Give him a round of applause. So important to recognize our faculty for their enormous work. Um, just a couple of words before we get to the rest of the program and appreciation for our marvelous faculty that are here today. What really anchors me as a provost, as a, as a professional, uh, as an educator, is the fact that um, all value that's created by the university is created, as I always say, through the interface between faculty and students. This very library, all of, the, all of the buildings and books, athletics, advancement, business and administrative services, everything that you see, touch, and all the things that you do not see are derived from what faculty create with students within the classroom. And so it is that foundation that we stand upon and that we truly appreciate. One of the great luxuries of my role is that I get to experience that value every single day. It's one of the things that drives me every day. There's so many examples of the multiplication of that particular value over time. Just a few days ago, I was at the Alumni Hall of Fame event where four marvelous students, former students of the institution, stood on this stage and spoke so proudly about their experience here at CSUB. One of those students is our current district attorney here in Bakersfield, Cynthia Zimmer. And one of the things that she said that really struck a chord in me, her exaltation of her education here at this institution started and ended with her praise of, our, of her faculty. And to think of all the great things that she and all of those Hall of Fame winner, winners, all of the alumni 
that are connected to this institution would all point back to that value that's created within the classroom by our marvelous faculty. Give all of them a round of applause. Give all of our faculty a round of applause. And I want to thank the families of our Hall of Fame win winners here today. Appreciate them for being here. I want to thank Jim in um, posthumously, uh, uh, Jim, Beth, of course, uh, Jan, and of course, Mark. Mark, who I worked with. Where's Mark? Where's Mark? Worked with since I uh, came here at the institution. Thank you for everything, all the advice and counsel all over that time. So please enjoy the rest of your meal, enjoy this program, and thank you again for your marvelous service to CSUB. Well, I'm going to uh, talk about Jim Segesta. I hope that uh, many of you didn't, didn't know him because he was, uh, he's been gone from here for 21 years, but uh, I'm, I'm going to uh, begin by just telling you that Jim started working at CSUB in 1969. That was before the school opened its doors to students. When he came here, there were still bulldozers moving dirt around, and he was put, and there were carpenters putting nails in buildings, and iron workers and painters. And uh, Jim was one of the early plant planners of this, of a very unique campus and a very unique idea. Um, it was hoped that a village would develop here, and that students and faculty would work across the disciplines to interactively chart new ways of learning and thinking and create the kind of school where students and their professors would sit on the grass on a spring day and argue philosophical questions. I don't know if that worked or not, but that was the plan. <laughs> so, uh, in its early days, like I said, CSUB was a dusty center of academic experimentation located far from the city, surrounded by agricultural fields, and staffed by eager young faculty who were convinced they could bring unique learning experiences to their students. Jim was a perfect choice for a job whose purpose was to cut out stuffy ideas from the past and replace them with something new. <clears throat> to him and his campus colleagues, the uh, library offered students the resources to freely explore, explore ideas, experiment with their identities, and direct their own learning. In addition to the CSUB library, Jim loved knowledge, art, and nature, and he never stopped immersing himself in all three. When I came here in 98 to replace Jim as collection development coordinator, I had big shoes to fill, and he was the one who helped me fill them. He made a point to mentor, mentor me. He guided me through the intricate files and records he kept. He talked to me about his efforts with the nascent CSUB archives and his desire to preserve campus history, but mostly he helped me learn how to navigate my new role as a faculty librarian. When I first got here, he invited me to a Brook Told a Breck play that was being performed by a local theater group. While the play had more people in the cast than it did in the audience, it made me aware that there was more to Bakersfield than initially met the eye. Um, Jim also uh, liked, we liked to hike out at the Carrizo Plain, and we shared a lot of lunches together. It was his nature to help new faculty like me find their way. Jim came here from San Bernardino, which opened up five years before CSUB did. And uh, he had a BA in English from the University of Michigan, a master's in English from uh, the University of Southern California and a library science uh, degree from the University of Southern California also. <clears throat> Jim was always a writer and he wrote poetry his whole adult life, but unlike a lot of poets, he also had a keen interest in technology. He, uh, Jim helped guide and lead uh, the library through dramatic and traumatic changes uh, as it moved from paper and a card catalog 
to an early online system and from analog online systems through the early digital re revolution. Uh, when the library outgrew its first home on the west side of the Red Brick, Red Brick Road, Jim played a vital role in planning and designing the current library. At the time of its construction in 1994, the CSUB library was considered a leader among CSUs in technological innovation and creative design, and that, in a large part, that was due to Jim's efforts. He was a promoter of diverse perspectives, and he developed a program that brought librarians from other countries to CSUB to work in the library and to visit campus. Over his 30 years at CSUB, he had, a, he had a wide ranging accomplishments, heading departments of technical processes, collection development and reference. He was famous among students for his reference skills, his, effecti his effectiveness as a, as, a as a reference librarian, and they sought, him out, they sought him out for help. Jim was a librarian when librarians were moving from new technology moving into new technologies with such devastating speed that many librarians left the profession and many professors and students floundered. Jim was able to break down and explain what was required to conduct research during those early years of the digital revolution in, this, in his library classes and he saved many students from drowning in confusion and dropping out. He was a scholar with the, um, eclectic research interests and he published uh, articles in a number of different journals. Right up until the end of his life, he was publishing, um, his final article was published posthumously in the annals of uh, the IEEE journal, uh, Annals of History of Computing. The article is a historical look at the work of Harvey Tillett, a naval weapons station engineer um, who in 1956, Jim argued, was the first person to use a computer for a library research application by developing a system that allowed for the searching of a database for specific documents. And as I mentioned, Jim contributed much to the preservation of early campus history. Locating many of the school's founding documents and ephemera and saving the university from a loss of much of its history. In addition to the archives, Jim co-authored a Walker's Guide to CSUB in 1994, a booklet which showed Jim's deep appreciation of the campus and was a source for many campus tours and depicted depi and offered depictions of its flora, its facilities, and its art. <clears throat> when Jim died at the age of 66 in, uh, on May 13, 2001, he left the library and the campus a legacy of pioneering accomplishments. His instruction and service helped direct the academic and professional lives of countless students. Jim was, a pas had, was passionate for libraries and for our students, and he worked in a profession he loved and did much to improve educational opportunities at CSUB. Accepting uh, this award on his behalf is Jim's uh, daughter, Gladys. Would you stand, please, and come up? Yeah. Gladys Yu is her name. Does that seem appropriate? More? More, okay. Thank you, appreciate it. All right, that, that's better, okay. All right, um, I'm not as practiced as our former dean, so bear with me. I'm honored to present this award to Beth Rienzi. Uh, I'd like to welcome Beth's spouse, Judith, 
um, Beth's daughter, Jeanette, and son, Jim, and Beth's granddaughter, Melissa, who are here with us today. Um, Beth's deep respect for higher education is demonstrated by her commitment to this institution as a student, faculty member, and administrator. When I got to know Beth, she was a psychology professor. She went on to direct the Faculty Teaching and, and Learning Center, then became the Assistant Dean of Arts and Humanities, then Associate Vice President of Faculty Affairs. She was also a prolific scholar, publishing and presenting many papers during her career, and held very various positions in professional organizations. She was active in the community, lending her expertise to state and county mental health departments and other agencies. Beth modeled a life of service. She gave generously of her time and energy to create a better community, both on and off campus. Beth's list of achievements is impressive, but I'd like to talk about another aspect of Beth's career. I, I never took a class from Beth. I was not one of her students. I wasn't even really one of her colleagues. I, I was lucky enough to count Beth as a friend. Throughout her rise on campus, she maintained that friendship with me. We had brown bag lunch dates two or three times a quarter for as long as I knew her. I'd like to share what I saw from that perspective. Many professors are respected by their students and some are well liked. Beth's students loved her. She took mentoring very seriously and never missed an opportunity to collaborate with her students in her research. Endlessly curious, with Beth, any conversation could lead to an idea worthy, worthy of a research project. I personally know several students who were guided by Beth to pursue advanced degrees. Their academic paths and their lives were shaped in part by their relationships with Beth. I'm certain there were countless others. Maybe you know one or two. If you take a closer look at her service to this university, a theme emerges. As she moved into different roles at CSUB, she persisted in her role as mentor. At each of her posts, she continued to encourage and nurture the talent she saw in others. Through tireless work and persistence, she carved a space not only for herself, but for others who followed. She respected the institutions of higher learning. There's no doubt about that but she was not bound by them. As a non-traditional student, she knew the feeling of being an outsider and knew how difficult it could be to overcome the feeling of not belonging at the university. And she recognized that feeling in her students and colleagues. In turn, they could see that she genuinely believed in their talent and intellect. Her demeanor, her curiosity, and her attention reflected the value she placed on diverse life experiences and the value that people from all walks of life could bring to the university and the broader community. Her experience, wisdom, and institutional knowledge put her in a position to mentor aspiring scholars and new faculty members, in particular the underrepresented. Her message was not just, you belong, but you're needed. Take your place. She did her best to pave the way and show us there's a place for all of us. We just need to show up and put in the work and take a seat at the table. Um, would Beth's family like to step up and accept her reward?
it's a sincere honor to tell you a little bit about why Jan Gillespie should be in the Faculty Hall of Fame. Jan Gillespie is a pioneer educator and scholar whose 28-year career at CSUB left lasting positive impacts on student education and the university's research reputation. Jan served as a mentor and a role model for women in STEM and routinely involved graduate and undergraduate students in her research from her arrival at CSUB in 1991 to her retirement in 2019. She was department chair twice, providing leadership when it was needed most. She initiated the first dual credit program at CSUB where high school seniors take a college level course while still in high school. This program started with collaborations between a local high school teacher, who is also here today, and Jan then with NSF funding uh, with co-PI Dirk Barron, uh, under the, their leadership, the program blossomed. Today, geology dual credit courses are taught in seven regional high schools involving hundreds of students every year. Following Jan's lead and the resounding success of the geology dual credit program, several other CSU departments have all now also adopted dual credit programs. Jan also mentored CSUB student teams in international competition. This rigorous annual global competition is where graduate student teams analyze a geoscience data set for eight weeks prior to the competition. Each team delivers their analysis in a 25-minute presentation to a panel of industry experts. Jan's teams did well, and in 2015, the CSUB team took second place in the West Coast competition, beating teams from universities that included San Diego State, Northridge, Portland State University, and UC Santa Barbara. This is quite an achievement and is a testament to Jan's abilities as a mentor, educator, and geologist. Jan has earned a number of awards as a result of her abilities as a teacher, including the Distinguished Educator Award from the Pacific Section of the American Association of Petroleum Geologists and the Millie Amblin Outstanding Professor Award here at CSUB. Her legacy continues as one of her former students was the CSUB NSME Rising Runner in 2019. Jan also excels as a researcher. She has a long, strong record of impactful publications, many with student co-authors, focusing on the geology and hydrogeology of the region. As a PI or co-PI, Jan acquired over $5.7 million in external grants in a, and at CSUB and another $6.4 uh, $6 million in in-kind cash donations to establish a computer-based training center in applied geoscience. She established herself as a prominent expert in groundwater, aquifers, and water quality in the Central Valley, and her work and expertise made Jan a regular for interviews of all types of media. Jan's scholarship also caught the attention of the United States Geological Survey. And in 2015, the USGS completely bought out all of Jan's time to work as a US junior, USGS senior uh, scientist. As a, result, as a result of her many research accomplishments, Jan received the prestigious American Association of Petroleum Geologists Division of Environmental Sciences Research Award in 2018. As an emeritus professor, Jan continues to stay connected to the department, including arranging for CSUB geology field experiences, providing helpful advice to the department, and informing us about student and graduate opportunities at the USGS and I sincerely appreciate her willingness to engage with students and advise us um, uh, uh, in the geology department. Jan is certainly deserving of the honor of being inducted into the CSUB Hall of Fame. Jan.
Good afternoon, everyone. This thing goes till two, right? So I got an hour. <laughs> so it is my honor and privilege uh, to introduce my colleague, friend. Uh, if I say mentor, he'll think he's too old, so I won't say mentor. Uh, but uh, Dr. Mark Evans, he uh, got his bachelor's uh, from New Mexico State in economics, got his PhD from University of New Mexico, also in economics, and he came here in 1978. What's interesting is I think uh, either I could, would have had him as a colleague, as I do now, or as a professor, because before coming here, he was at a University of Missouri in Kansas City. Uh, for a year, where many years later, I went there as a grad student, did my master's there, so, so there's some destiny things there. Um, but since Mark's been on this campus, uh, he's done a lot of things. Uh, so in 2017, uh, we nominated him to uh, the Professor Emeritus for all the work he's done in his career for this, and. I, I couldn't think of another person that I would nominate to be in the Hall of Fame, because I think he embodies. Uh, so one of the things that, um, uh, you know, every time you, you say Mark's name, first thing everybody says, oh, he's a nice guy. And so one of the things he said when he found out who else uh, would be going to the Hall of Fame with him, he said, oh, they're all nice people. I like them. So which is good, uh, because that's probably the one thing that um, I, I can say that I think I've tried to model my career after Mark's. Uh, not nearly as successful. Um, his generosity, uh, his giving, what he does, I mean, it permeates through everything he does. So talk about students. There is not a single moment when a student comes to his office that he will say, or he would say, uh, I don't have time right now. We all do that, I do that, you know, and, and Many times I think about, oh, Mark wouldn't have done that, but we're not Mark, so we can't do that. Um, and he's also very open and honest about what you feel like, or what, you, what he thinks of you. So, and he does that with the students too, so I think they respect him for that. So, so that's Mark as an individual, as, as I can say, go on and on about uh, what an amazing individual he is. But in terms of accomplishments, uh, so after coming here, uh, he was instrumental in starting a lot of programs and a lot of things. So um, to begin with, we started the Center for Economic Education and Research, which still is going strong today. Uh, he was uh, an interim dean in extended education. And during that time, uh, I think the extended education, uh, or EGO, um, also offered a few online uh, programs. One of them was uh, the Environmental Resource Management Program, and another one was a Master's of Science in Administration. Uh, he also was instrumental in developing uh, a Bachelor of Science in Applied Studies. This is for, you know, there's a lot of people in this community who have a lot of credits from all different places, but they don't have a degree. So this was an idea to try to do that. Unfortunately, um, there were no champions that could carry the work that he had done. So we don't have that program anymore, although you know, I'm sure I could call up Mark and say, would you like to work on it? And he's there. Because that's the other thing about Mark. I don't think he will ever retire, even though he's technically retired. Because um, just, just, just last week, he sent a text saying, you know, there's this really great book that can be used in this intro class. Like, Mark, you're retired. <laughs> so, so hopefully, putting him in the Hall of Fame, he'll leave us alone. Just kidding. Uh, the other thing that Mark was very instrumental in is, is bringing the Small Business Development Center to CSUB. And that is probably one of the, the best things he's done, among all the other things, because it brought to us um, a, a great center and a great director and Kelly Bearden. And it's amazing how much work that center has done. It's affiliated with the business school, uh, this, the community engagement part. And that's the other thing that Mark has done over the years. You can go anywhere in Bakersfield, and you're bound to see a student that had Mark for, uh, for a class, uh, especially in local government. Uh, they'll see economics, they'll come up to us and say, how's Dr. Evans? Uh, he's still working. 
But um, so I think that's the kind of dedication he had to this institution. Uh, he also was very instrumental in uh, helping uh, the Antelope Valley Center grow over the years. Uh, he had a lot of input into it. And um, also, again, academic programs. But probably the, the biggest contribution he's made to the business school uh, was when he was uh, an associate dean and an interim dean of the business school. And he worked on the accreditation. It was a lot of work. Uh, especially when you read it, you're like, wow, this is amazing that the university and the business school does all of these things. But because Mark has that knack to try to find the best in everything and to, to be able to promote it and do that. So, so that's another incredible thing. So he was also the chair of the economics department. And again, you can see the passion in, in the individual about always about students. You know, this, how can we help the students? And also not just thinking about what they should learn, but about the job placement. That was the, probably the biggest thing is like, okay, they're coming here for a degree, what kind of jobs can they get? And if there was anybody that Mark knew, he'd be like, oh, I have this student, that would be great for you. So, so that's why you can see in one of the students is here with us today. And you can go back the last 40 years or 35 years, whatever, however long you were here, Mark, uh, and talk to the students and they would all say the same thing over and over. This is Dr. Evans. There have been many people in the economics department, but the one name you keep hearing is, is, is Mark Evans. Um, he was also uh, instrumental in developing uh, courses that he thought would be helpful. And, and the nice thing about it is, again, there's a, a, a thirst that academics have that he still has. So we still talk about possible topics or research and things like that. And they're great ideas. But I'm like, Mark, I don't have the time. But, you know, and then the other thing, of course, uh, that Mark introduced me to is fantasy baseball. So <laughs> another time killer, but great. So in that reference, I will say Mark did all of these things steroid free. <laughs> That's a Hall of Fame baseball joke. It's, it, it's uh, like I said, I could, I could go on and on about uh, all the things that he's done, but the, to me, when you think of a, the quintessential academic, that is Mark Evans. You know, the intellectual curiosity, the willingness to help everybody be the best that they can be, help the students uh, achieve what they need to achieve without um, expecting anything in return. As economists, I'm told, we have a going rate of $350 an hour for consulting. Mark did a lot of consulting, but did it pro bono, which is what got me to do the same thing. So because of him, I'm poor as well. <laughs> so that's the other thing. Uh, I, I still remember one event where we went to um, uh, a nonprofit and uh, for years, they'd hired an economist who would charge a certain amount, and the price went up, and they couldn't afford it. So of course, Mark said, OK, you want to go with me? So we went, talked about it. And this was, would have been my first such a visit to, oh, we're going to get to consult, ask for all this data and all these other stuff. And we came back, and I was like, oh, I'm assuming that we're going to get paid the 250 or 350 an hour. So weeks go by, and I'm like, so Mark, do we charge them? What do you do? He goes, oh, no, no, we're just going to do this for free. I was like, oh, OK. <laughs> but again, that, this, this need he had for developing the community. And so that's where, to me, I could not, uh, I was so fortunate to find somebody like Mark. Even though for many of the years that I was here in the beginning, he was an uh, interim dean in, the, um, in EGO, the extended education. Still, you could feel he would come over, and, and, and he could talk to a lot of the new faculty as well, whether they're in economics or others, where Mark is one of the first people to come and say, hey, how are you doing? I'm Mark Evans. And, and then he has a really good sense of humor. Many of the jokes I cannot say here, but sharp wit, you know, that's the other thing. So anyways, so I'm very proud uh, and honored uh, to help introduce uh, my friend, colleague, mentor, uh, Mark Evans.
I'm really proud to be uh, inducted with the group of people that I'm being inducted with. Um, I knew Jim very well, I knew Beth very well, and they were both really terrific people. And uh, I told Jan outside that uh, had she done nothing at all other than supervise those senior field trips out there off of Zizix Road, 100 miles from Vegas, she would deserve to be in the Hall of Fame. But obviously, she's done much more than that. Uh, my family are my favorite people, and they're all here today. My wife, Becky, uh, daughters, Melanie, Monica, and uh, Ramona. Um, I do have a, a vision that's department-centered and student-centered, but you really don't get that out of any academic doctoral program. Uh, <clears throat> so my mentor, uh, Dr. David Ost, who's uh, also a member of the Hall of Fame, uh, really uh, enculturated me about what we're really about here, which is uh, students and community. So I'd like to uh, recognize David. Uh, my department, my, my uh, colleagues are absolutely the greatest. Uh, thank you, Aaron. And uh, <clears throat> thank you for my colleagues for being great colleagues, but also for when we would get a crazy idea of something we wanted to try to do in the department that was a little unconventional, say, uh, yeah, let's go for it. Let's see what happens. Uh, and then uh, one of our alumnuses, uh, Abe Padilla, I think I especially, because the big thing with our department is to get our students jobs. Well, he came back as a, uh, an adjunct and he's gotten literally dozens and dozens and dozens of students' jobs in town that are very high-paying jobs. Uh, and that's what we all aspired to do, but we really needed El Abe's help to, to make it happen. Uh, and then uh, also I'd like to recognize uh, Kelly Bearden, who uh, also helped the department externally and the business school enormously uh, through helping thousands of businesses for free helping them uh, really succeed in, in capturing millions of dollars of uh, uh, financial investment in their, their businesses. Thank you. Since we have so much time, um, does anyone want to come up and say a few words um, to anyone today? I'll leave a moment for the awkward. I can pass the mic if you don't want to come all the way up. Okay. Okay. Well, with that, um, we'll wrap things up today. I, I do want to recognize the Faculty Hall of Fame members from 2020 and 2021. If we have any of those folks in the room, if you wouldn't mind standing. Thank you. Thank you. I don't have to say the C word. We all know why we didn't have events um, in 2020 and 2021. Um, so we did have virtual ceremonies for Faculty Hall of Fame. They are online, they were recorded. Uh, today's uh, ceremony was also re recorded and will be online at some point. We've got to get it re rendered and ready, but it will be online on the uh, Historical Research Center's website. So. Um, for families and friends who couldn't be here, please um, feel free to share that with them. Um, we, um, we're glad everyone could make it here today. Um, outside, of, um, outside of our normal busy lives, um, to take this time to honor uh, the highest award uh, recognized here at CSUB, which is the Faculty Hall of Fame Distinguished Award. So thank you all for coming. Food is left. Please um, enjoy uh, the food, cookies, and mingling with yourselves. We have the room until 2. <laughs> thank you.